We can go from a basic wall and slab connection like this to a detailed connection like this. That also shows up in the 3D. That means that we can create details on the fly while we're cutting through different sections of the building and the structure will automatically show up. The way that we're doing this is by using the complex profile tool, which is this one just here, to create a slab edge that accurately represents what's happening below our structure. Now the dimensions for these slab edges have been used from Building Your Own Home by George Wilkie, which is a great book and I highly recommend, especially if you live in Australia. But to create these custom profiles, it's actually pretty quick and easy. To kick off, we'll just start in our full plan view. We'll go to our line tool, we'll click once, holding in shift, we'll then tap D and type in 386 for our first measurement, then 300 for our next one, going across. I'll zoom on in just so we can get a little bit more accurate with our drawings. Next one is going to be 200 across. I'll draw a line just across this top portion. I'll do it one meter. Then I'll draw a line from this 300 mark just up to here. I'll select this line and duplicate it, tapping control. Then I'll type in 100 for our top slab and enter. From here, I'll draw up from our 200 that we just set up earlier. Then I'll connect this corner here to this corner just here. Going to draw another line here, just 650. I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter, just to there. I'll crop off this line and delete this longer line just here. And I'll hold in control just to use the snip tool to snip off these two lines here, as well as these ones just on the internal. I'm gonna use the fill tool just here, and I'm gonna hold in spacebar to use the magic wand, and I'm going to select on the inside of this here. Last detail that we'll want is just our little rebate for this section here. So we're going to go from the top down 86. I'll hit enter. Then across 110, which is a typical brick. And then I'll go across 50 for a typical cavity width. And then I'll go up. So from here, I'll select the fill. I'll hold in Alt, so the eyedropper pops up. I'll select the fill. And then while our background fill is all selected, I'm going to click in this bottom right-hand corner up to the top left-hand corner. And that's going to cut out from that fill. From here, I can select the whole thing from top left down to bottom right. Then I'm going to deselect by holding in Shift and selecting the fill. And that way, I can just delete all the line work that we just created. And this way, I'm just left with the edge beam. From here, I'm just going to go Control C to copy it. I'll go up into Options, and I'll go to Profile Manager. The Profile Manager will pop up just here. I'll hit this plus button just to start off a new profile. I'll call this one Edge Beam Single Story, and I'll go OK. I'll double click to center myself to the screen. I'll zoom out just a little bit more, and I'll hit Control V and I'll go center of current view and go paste. And this has placed our fill just into the view. From here, I'll wanna line it up with this square just here and just across to here. And then I'll delete the original cube just in the middle. From here, I wanna select this fill. I'm going to change this fill to concrete. This one just here. This will be important in just a minute. So this fill type just here. With our footing selected, if we go to options and then go to building materials, this is where we can set the priority of the different materials. For this one, there are gonna be four materials that we're gonna focus on. Number one being the concrete, this one just here. We'll put the intersection priority at 800. Don't worry, this will make sense in just a second. We'll go okay. Now next up, we'll want to put our brickwork just here. So to do this, we'll just hold in Alt and select the fill with the eyedropper tool. Let's draw in a field just here from bottom left to top right. And then we'll select this and we'll bring this in 50, which is our cavity, which will leave us with 110 for our brickwork and 86 for our brick height, which is going to be 76 worth of brick and as well as 10 for the mortar. We'll select this one and we'll change the fill type to a brick, this one just here. Now, if you don't have a brick like this, I'll go into the options and I'll go to building materials. Just go through to say new, we'll go brickwork one, We'll go okay. I've set the material as brick white natural and I've set the fill as brick stack. Now, if you don't have brick stack, I'll just go okay. To create a brick stack fill, all we need to do, go to our line tool just up here, we'll go line. We'll draw one across, doesn't matter on the width, we'll say 200. I'll bring it up, we'll go 10 millimeters for the mortar and then we'll go 76 for the actual brick itself. So if we select all of these, we'll go copy then we'll go to options and then we'll go to fills. We'll go to a new fill. We'll go symbol fill and we'll call this one brick stack two. And I'll go okay. From here, I wanna paste this one in and this has created our fill. Now just up here, this is what it's going to look like when we're trying to select it. So let's make that easier by changing this just over here. So if we select in here, we can create a little pixel indication of what our lines are gonna look like. So if I draw one there, and say one there, it's going to look more like this, which makes it so much easier to find. So from here, we'll just go, okay. We can select our brickwork just here that we'd set to uh, the brick material that we just created. So we'll go through to materials, we're on the brick, then we'll select the stack, go 
brick stack two that we just set up before. The priority on this doesn't have to be too high, so we'll set this to say 500. Again, this will make sense in a second. We'll just get through this part and we'll go, okay, let's delete our lines from just here. Now, our last little fill for this complex profile is just this section here. So if we go bottom left up to top right, we'll select the fill and we'll change this one here to cavity. Go cavity airspace, this one just here. I'll go in just to make sure that you've got it set up in the same as mine as well. So cavity airspace just here. I've just got this material as air. I've got the fill as airspace and the pen as just white. I've got this as relatively strong. I've got this set to say 900. So from there, we'll just go, okay. Now we'll also just hit in beam as well, just so we've got options where we can use these custom profiles. It'll make sense in a second. We'll go back into our 3D just by hitting F3. Now let's go ahead and delete our earlier example. So let's delete this one just here, as well as this one just here. We're gonna do this all from fresh. I'll select these walls and I'll put them back to a basic structure, this one just here. So we're doing it all from scratch. So we'll just go back to the 2D. We can now delete this one just here and we'll go back to our floor plan. So we can actually do this really quickly from the floor plan. All we need to do, we'll just go to the wall tool and from here, we'll go to structure and make sure it is set to complex profile, this one just here. So we'll go to custom and then we'll go to edge beam single story that we just created and we'll click this one just here. Next up, we'll wanna hold in spacebar so that the magic one turns on. And from here, we'll just move it over to the edge of the slab that we created for the building. Now, when I line it up, it's gonna show the outline on the outside. So I'm just going to click once and it's drawn all of them in, but they're facing out the wrong way. So what we can do, if we select these now with grouping turned on, all we need to do is just hit reference line location and flip wall on the reference line. So this one just here. It's gonna flip all those back the other way. Now it's currently obscuring our actual floor plan itself. So what we can do, we can right click and go display order and send to back. And once we hit escape, it'll just be hidden underneath our structure. If you can still see it through, you might need to bring your slab up by selecting your slab, right clicking and going display order and bringing it up. Or you might need to go to your floor plan and section and make sure your cover fill is obscuring the below edge beam. All right, now with all that done, let's go into our 3D and check it out. Hey, there we go. So we've got our footing, but they're not aligned at the right height. So to remedy this, we'll just go back into our custom profile manager. This one just here. We'll go to our profile, which is our edge beam single story. This one just here. And if we go back into edit, one thing that's really easy to forget is just this origin point just here. So all we need to do is just select our fill just here. We'll select this top left-hand corner and we'll bring it just down to here. All we need to do now is go save. And then when we go back into our 3D, hey, there we go. That's all starting to take some shape. But if we zoom in, we still need to sort out this wall just here. So I'll change this from a basic structure. All I need to do is go in and make sure this is a composite profile. So this one just here, this middle one. Hey, there we go. Now, so that you can have a profile just like mine, this one just here, I'll go into options, I'll go element attributes and we'll go to composites. I'll go BW, this one just here, BW01. I'll open this one up just here. I've got the brickwork as the top skin, cavity space, and then timber, then a timber stud. I've got 110 for the brick width, 50 for the cavity space, and then 90 for the actual stud itself, as well as the plasterboard that's been set as a finish so we can turn it off in the 2D and 3D if we need to. And we'll go okay. Now the thing we need to set up before we have the composite is the building materials themselves. So if we go into options, attributes, and then we go to building materials, I've got the first one just here, brick, which I've got just set to the one that we did a little bit earlier. I've got the cavity space that we set up a little bit earlier. I've got the timber stud, this one just here, which I've got wood, pine, grained, horizontal, and an airspace just for the cut fill, and these settings for the plasterboard. So if we just go okay, then we're pretty much set. But if we go into our section just here and check it out, if we go down to the bottom, the pens are a little bit different. So I'll select my profile. In the profile manager just here, I'll just go to edit. I'll select all of my fills. Then I'll just wanna to go to uniform contour separator. And I'm gonna set these both to one with these pen sets. And I'll just go save. From here, I'll just go back to my section. I'll exit out of the profile manager. And there we go. So now if I go in 2D as well as in 3D, We've got these edge beams that will show up on all the edges of our slab. The cool thing is now if we go to our profile manager and we go back to our footing and we go to new, we can create a duplicate of this and adjust the different parameters. So this is for a single story, but in reality, this project is for a two story, which means it's going to have a deeper profile. So I'll cancel out of this one and show you one that I set up a little bit earlier. So if I go to two story double brick, we'll see this one just here. Now, the cool thing about the profiles is that if we select the edge beam, we can do this on the fly. We can select just here and use other profiles that we've created. So I'll click this double story one I created a little earlier and there we go. And just like that, we can change all the footings at once. Now let's say we had an internal beam just running across through here to stiffen up the slab. If I select the structure, go to this one I created earlier, you can draw it from here and through to here. 
I'll select it, I'll send it to the back. I'll go into my 3D and like that, it updates live in our section, which is such a handy thing about doing this kind of stuff in 3D when we can. Now to access this file or any of my other tutorial files, they're now available over on my Patreon. It's a space where I can look after a small group creating custom assets and resources. For more tips and tricks, I think you'll love this video just over here.